this episode. An emergency landing puts everyone on high alert. He's about to touch down, and this is anxious moments. A passenger's luggage holds a shocking secret. <gasps> oh! Vital deadlines are pushed to the limit. If it's not finished today, none of you will go home. And customs officers suspect they've discovered a multi-million dollar drugs haul. Now we'll put the swab in the detector machine and wait for the results. Dubai International Airport, the busiest global hub on the planet and aiming to stay there. Clear for takeoff. But perfection is never easy. It's not finished, it's supposed to be finished. More planes to service. Can we open the number three engine? More situations to deal with. And what do you mean, live snakes? More smugglers to stop. This is the heroin here. And massive engineering projects to complete on time. It's non-stop, 24-7. Hey! Everything is time, time, time. It's the job of 90,000 staff from all over the world to make this the ultimate airport. It's 2 a.m and Dubai International Airport doesn't slow down because it's the middle of the night. None of the 90,000 staff working here know when their training, expertise and experience could be tested to the maximum. Absolute professionalism is the name of the game. Hold it for me one second. We've got a bit of a situation. Fine, I just need to take this. Uh, that's all copied, thanks. Yeah, we'll get this services on standby. Copy that, thanks. Air traffic controller George Perkins has just received the phone call every controller dreads. An A380 is making an emergency return to Dubai shortly after takeoff. One of its four engines has suddenly shut down. The emergency services have been scrambled to the south runway to await its arrival. So approximately when he passed 2,000 feet, we got the call that his uh, third engine is out. It's a critical stage of flying. I mean, on departure, you're heavy, you need as much power as you can to keep climbing. And there's a few things that we need to go through at the moment. We need to get him out, he's got to dump some fuel, I mean, they're too heavy to land. An A380 with fully loaded fuel tanks will weigh almost 600 tonnes. Dumping more than 80,000 gallons of fuel worth a quarter of a million dollars may seem extreme, but it's the only way the plane will be able to safely land. Basically, like you can see now, the A380 is on about a 10-mile final. Um, everything's been sterile ahead of it. He's going to be running in now. We'll keep all vehicles clear of the runway. Uh, we have emergency services on standby. There'll be nothing behind the 380 on final in the event that the runway is blocked. In this situation, it's vital the stricken aircraft clears the runway as quickly as possible. With the A380 only 10 miles out and approaching at three miles per minute, Emirates maintenance engineer Andy Tetley is called into action. We just had a call from the office. We've, we've just had an aircraft um, is on its way back returning. Um, it's had an engine failure or engine shutdown. We're not sure which one yet. Andy and his team are responsible for any plane that lands here. The A380 isn't one of the Emirates fleet, but this is an emergency. In a situation like this, you don't assume anything. You have to wait until it's on the ground, you get the facts, and then you can... you just go on from there. Back in the tower, and the next problem facing George is what will happen when the A380 touches down. The worst case scenario that we have at the moment is that the aircraft actually lands and has to vacate immediately and block the runway, or there's any debris on the runway left from the engine as they touch down, because we'll have to do a full runway inspection after that. So the main thing is we don't actually want to get this runway blocked at the moment. If the A380 is stranded on the runway, this will be a major problem for air traffic control, as all incoming planes will have to be diverted. That could be over 60 planes in the next two hours alone. The unfolding drama could even close the airport entirely. If all the emergency services are busy with us, the 80 on the runway with the emergency, 
we must be able to attend to another emergency on the northern runway if we revert to that runway. And if we're unable to maintain that, if, this, if the incident's very big, we will suspend landing and take off at Dubai. We'll have to hold. Um, we're talking about diverts, delays, fuel emergencies. It's not a lane Cheers, then. On the tarmac, engineer Andy and his team are ready for just that eventuality, to get the aircraft off the runway as quickly as possible. But the reason I'm here with the guys is that if there is an issue in the aircraft that's stopped on the runway or the taxiway, because it, it is... It isn't able to taxi in for any reason, then that's why we have to go out. Basically, everybody's on high alert at the moment. The aircraft's on short final. Everybody will be looking at the aircraft, making sure the runway's clear, and then we'll assess the situation from there, ask the pilot what his intentions. Are they able to taxi? Are they holding position? Are they evacuating? And we're just waiting for that call now. We won't interfere with the pilot on short final. Cockpit workload's high. You can see him now on short final. He's about to touch down, and this is anxious moments. He seems to have been touched down safely. He's rolling out. He's not veering off the runway at the moment. Everything seems to be fine. That's the aircraft that's just now now landed. You can see there. Yeah, it looks like it's OK. It's taxiing in now, I think. Thankfully, on this occasion, the emergency services haven't had to intervene. But for Andy and his engineers, their job is just beginning. Until Andy can get eyes on the engine, he can only speculate as to what caused the engine to shut down. It could be a mechanical failure, or it could have been shut down by the pilot to prevent further damage. Can we open the number three engine? A visual check around the engine intake and exhaust will look for any obvious problems that may have been the cause of the shutdown. He's looking to see if there are any fan blades or large pieces of metal that may have fallen from the engine. Andy has spoken to the pilot, who says it was an automatic shutdown by the A380's computer system. There is no metal, there's no like, physical damage that I can see, but he said he just spilled down, and that was it. And he had to try to, tried to actually to do an in-flight relight. That didn't work, so that's why they came back. So it seems the onboard computers instantly shut down the engine automatically after the sensors detected a problem, preventing a potential disaster. Any gas turbine engine, if you have an overspeed of the Viking turbine blades, because they're contained in a disc, if you have a massive overspeed, what can happen, because of the centrifugal force on the blades, they will just break away. And what you'll have is very hot blades, which can eject like sidewards, because it's just like a big Catherine wheel. It's spinning around, that can eject, and it go out the engine. And obviously, what you've got just outside of the engine, you've got the fuselage, and you've got the wings, which are full of fuel. Until the cause of the shutdown can be identified, the plane and passengers are going nowhere. For Andy and his team, it looks like being a long night. Dubai International is the busiest global hub in the world. Every day, 182,000 passengers pass through between 260 destinations. Their luggage is routinely scanned as it passes on to connecting flights. The passengers may not be staying in Dubai, but if customs and police find something they think could be illegal, passengers will be stopped from their onward flight. We'll update for, by 4 o'clock, yeah? Airport services manager Mel is responsible for the smooth flow of Emirates passengers here. On any given day, she can find herself dealing with people arriving from almost anywhere in the world. In her 10 years at Dubai International, there isn't much she hasn't had to deal with. Any inbound? From yes, missing I'm luggage inbound. to missing passengers, she has seen it all. Hello, Mel speaking. Hold on a second, what do you mean live snakes? Where? In her checked-in baggage? All right. I'm on my way. I'm on my way, hun. I'm there. I'm coming down. All right, bye bye. Bye. Okay, we have an issue, guys. Let's get to Concourse C. Yeah. Yeah. 
On today's flight, we found that there's one bag full of live snakes, which has been picked up by the police. The passenger who the baggage belongs to has claimed that it's not her bag. I'm not quite sure of the full story, what's happening, but we do need to get down to the aircraft. I hate snakes. The passengers in question have arrived from Jakarta and are transiting through Dubai on their way to Kuwait. A routine scan of their luggage first alerted airport authorities. One of Mel's colleagues who has carried out a preliminary interview with the passengers has got more information about the bag. Do we have any more details about this passenger? Uh, yeah, she actually initially claimed that um, the bag does not belong to her. We further questioned her and then she started to um, become a little nervous. The customer who she claims the bag belongs to mm. is no such customer. That it's nice. With the ownership of the bag in dispute, Mel needs to turn detective. She speaks to an Emirates baggage handler. Do you have an issue? Okay, so um, when you asked her about her baggage, what did she say? She denied it. She said uh, these bags are not belongs to her. Mm. Perhaps this, uh, these bags are belongs to someone else. She has helped that uh, person because they were having excess baggage. Mel now needs to question the owner of the bag and members of the travelling party to get their side of the story. Definitely, this is uh, possibly a criminal case. Hello. Hello. I understand. No, no, that's fine. No issues. I just want to. No, no, he's, he's not going to film you if you don't want to be filmed. Sure. It's not a problem at all. In order to investigate, I need to ask you some questions. But I need to understand exactly what's happened here, okay? Because what I'm getting is that the baggage downstairs that we found doesn't belong to you. So I need to investigate that. Um, is it your baggage that we're talking about? It's not your baggage? Whatever the truth of their story, one thing is certain. At the end of the day, you and your family are not traveling, so you're not traveling on this flight. We will look for a flight for you, but I need to understand exactly what's happened here. The situation reaches a stalemate. The passengers claim they do not own the bags. The evidence suggests that they do own them, but Mel has to be sure. Okay, so... One thing is certain. Checking in bags for another person is against the airline's policy. OK, let's go and have a look at the bag. Ever professional, Mel doesn't forget that she still has a duty of care over the passengers and their children. If you can get some meal vouchers, maybe get them some food, because the children are quite small, yeah? I've got to try and understand what's happened here. There's two different stories. One is that the baggage doesn't belong to the passenger um, and that the passenger was just assisting another passenger. In addition to which, um, there's other conflicting stories saying that the baggage does belong to the passenger. So we need to get to the bottom of it, really. This situation is going to call on all her years of experience if she's to find the answers she needs. With the ownership of luggage full of live snakes in dispute, airport services manager Mel needs to get to the bottom of the story. The passengers who checked it in deny it's theirs. Mel goes to the baggage handling area to see for herself. I'm following you. This is new for me. Oh, you discovered today something? Yes. Are they eggs? Those are eggs, right? The scans show the cases are packed with snakes and eggs. These cases are alive. This large case contains a huge snake. Oh, my gosh. I'm just curious to know, we've got the other baggage that belongs to the same passengers, so I'm just curious to know what's been packed in those bags. Maybe there'll be another surprise, who knows? Oh, my gosh. And what's in here? Oh, that's an... Oh! That's upset me, that has. The cases are full of monkeys, and there are even kittens in there, likely destined to be fed to the snakes. No, no, of course not. This has to be declared by our customs and everything. We need certificates. Live animals can only be transported legally with the correct paperwork and in proper containers. 
And if the animals are an endangered species, the maximum punishment in Dubai is up to six months in jail and a fine of over $10,000. It's, it's absolutely heart-wrenching. I, I hate to think how those animals are feeling. All I can hear is the crying, so I don't really want to look. I think everybody's feeling the same. Um, it's not a nice situation at all. It's inhumane, actually. Any item of luggage that has disputed ownership is a massive security risk. And coupled with the animal trafficking, Mel has only one option, to hand over the matter to the Dubai police. Although uh, the passenger is suggesting that she tried to help another passenger with excess baggage, um, ultimately, she checked in those bags. The baggage receipts are under her name. Um, and again, he said if it had been any illegal substances, it's very easy for people to turn around and say, I checked it in for somebody else. So they are going to pursue a case in this instance. They're going to take uh, the passenger and the other passengers upstairs that are traveling with her to the main police office in Concourse B. This is now a, a criminal case. With the animals now safely cared for and the passengers facing a police investigation, Mel can return to the main terminal. It's 3 a.m. on Dubai International's southern runway. Can we open the number three engine? Emirates maintenance engineer Andy Tetley has been battling with the engine of another airline's A380 which had to make an emergency landing after it automatically shut down. Without any obvious external damage or any visible damage to the engine under the cowling, it looks like Andy and his team will need to investigate the causes of the shutdown in greater detail. So with the cowling of the failed Engine 3 open, Andy can start his internal inspection. It, it has lost oil. Yeah. Uh, it's actually lost quite a bit of oil, but it has still oil in the system. It's supposed to be about um, 17 quarts of oil. We, we're down to about 10. But even if it is, even if it has gone down to that much, that's still not going to cause the engine to fail. It looks like, from first impression, there's an internal failure before we give up internally in the engine, which is going down the road of a possible engine change. Unfortunately for the passengers on board, they aren't going anywhere, and they must remain on the plane. Passenger safety is paramount, however frustrating it might be. Two and a half hours later, and as the sun rises over Dubai International, Andy has to admit defeat. It had actually failed, so um, it is very rare. I mean, there's only been a handful of times these have ever happened. And in fact, I was just speaking to the captain 32 years, and it was his first ever engine failure, 32 years. And after a long night sitting on the plane, all the passengers and their luggage are taken off. They'll have to wait for a new flight to be arranged for their onward journey, but the stricken A380 is pushed away to have a new engine fitted. Now we're just going to get it prepared to be towed. It's going to be go over to the other side to the hangar, and then we'll, we'll actually get it prepped for an engine change, basically. Jumar al Mazrui is head of project delivery at Dubai Aviation Engineering Projects. He's one of the team responsible for delivering the massive construction fueling the airport's expansion. Last year saw the completion of the world's first dedicated A380 concourse, the $3.2 billion Concourse A. Failure is not an option for us here. This is Dubai. I don't need friends here in the airport. I need the building to be finished. I can't. <laughs> Once it is done, then we can be friends forever. This year, engineering projects are doing vital repairs to the runways. The cost of handling more international passengers than any other hub is huge wear and tear. Every 92 seconds, heavy jets, including colossal A380s weighing up to 600 tonnes, pound the tarmac on takeoff and landing, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
The extreme weight, coupled with a ground temperature of a sweltering 140 degrees, take a heavy toll on the runway. With the airport open day and night, there's little time for the constant repair needed to keep them in operational condition. Dubai International is planning something radical, shutting down one runway at a time for vital repairs. For nearly three months, there will be only one runway, a massive cut in capacity. Many planes that normally fly into Dubai International will divert to Dubai World Central, a new airport in the desert. It has to be ready for any overspill in four days. And just like last year, the pressure is on Jumar. If you think you will finish a project with no problems, that means you're dreaming. You're living in a dream. Jumar is making a site inspection. First up, the cargo stands. The consultant here, yeah. He's come to give the contractors an urgent reminder of their deadline. So, today is 15. We have only four days. The handing over of the site cannot be delayed, but Jumar wants the work finished to his exacting high standards. Second thing, full cleaning of the site has been done? Yes. That's, that's yes. expected by that. What about FOD? What about FOD? Go. No, no. Any FOD or foreign object debris can seriously damage a plane. See, guys, you did a very good job. We finished everything, but we cannot have the last mile not uh, reaching what and we need. no more snacks. If we need to do any snack in any area, we're going to close it off and we're going to work. Yeah. But I cannot keep all of this area ready and not operational. Yes. And if the problem of FOD wasn't bad enough, eagle-eyed Jumar has spotted another one. My first worry is this drainage. It's full with sand. That's when you have to re-unscrew re unscrew, uh, everything. Clear it up. It may rain only seven days a year in Dubai, but Jumar insists that the drainage system is fully functioning. The list of problems doesn't stop there. Before the cargo stands can be declared operational, they need to have a fire safety certificate, which means they need a fire department inspection. Oh, Baba, come here. Where is fire chief inspection? Arranged when? Salim. Salim. Which Salim? Salim Ali Guys? <laughs> guys, I'm sorry, today is the 15th. No, I don't want... I don't... Nobody seems to be taking responsibility for getting the certificates. With four days to go, it's all too much for Jumar. Who's taking notes of what we need to do and when? Who's, who's writing here? Who's writing the action? Who's writing the action? What action did you write so far? We have the full FOD and the cleaning up of the area. We have the fire chief uh, certificate. What does Salim is saying? He's not answering. Okay, call him again. If it's not finished today, none of you will go home. It's not as easy as uh, we thought. Today is the 15th. 19th, we're supposed to have the first flight in the morning. And it seems that we still have two or three inspections that need to be done. 12. Okay. Sultan just added two. Let's go. But the site inspection is not over yet. Jumar still has to inspect the passenger terminals that will also need to be ready in four days' time. As an Islamic nation, the United Arab Emirates have very strict rules about offensive items entering their country. Religious pamphlets, pornographic material, and any books or magazines which don't comply with their religious values are forbidden. In addition, it has one of the world's strictest policies on illegal drugs. There is zero tolerance. Customs officers at Dubai International Airport have to vet around 182,000 passengers a day from all over the world. One of the customs officers is Hassan Ibrahim. For the past 14 years, he's been working on the front line, detecting and stopping passengers who are bringing in illicit goods. So I have just uh, now a call from my colleagues, and there is uh, one passenger is acting uh, suspiciously, and we have to check him now. At Terminal 2, Hassan and his team from customs are alerted by the behavior of one passenger who has just taken his luggage off the conveyor belt. <laughs> Hassan's team have taken him to their office to question him. 
We have a passenger here. He's from Tajikistan. He doesn't speak English. So now I'm trying to speak with him, and like Buzi is uh, speaking a little bit uh, Russian and uh, Persian. So I'm trying to uh, communicate with them in Persian. Uh, you say three days and he will buy some some pins from here. After that you're going to Moscow. And I think it's uh, not a good story. Now I'm asking passenger for his ticket to see if this is saying the truth or no. Okay. So here's uh, the passenger's uh, tickets. It's one way only, not two ways. So it's not. Uh, so if he's saying the truth, it should be Dushanbe, Dubai, Dubai, Moscow. But it's only uh, Dushanbe, Dubai. He's arrived from Tajikistan, and despite the passenger saying he is going to Moscow, there is no onward flight booked. In Hassan's experience, this is very suspicious. Here, the passenger is denying that the bags belongs to him. He said that uh, in uh, Dushanbe airport, uh, he have a black bag, not white, and uh, this bag not belongs to him. I told him, if it is not your bag from the beginning, why did you pick it up from the belt? Your bag is black, and this bag is white. It's totally different colors. The passenger says he checked in a black bag, but his luggage receipt matches the white bag he was stopped with. And as you see, that's his tag number. I compare the tag number with the passenger. Imon Shimon, the same details, same number, so it's the bags belongs to him. Okay, but Harzona, but Hatun Arabi, will Miza Marko? So these are his personal things. It's been checked, nothing in it. Having found nothing in the contents, they need to scan the bags themselves. Okay, lovely. They want to see whether anything has been hidden inside the linings of the bags. If there is anything in the bags that shouldn't be there, the passenger will be in serious trouble. Dubai has some of the strictest drug laws in the world. Possession of even a trace of illegal substance carries a minimum four years in jail. The maximum sentence is death. Dubai International handles more than 2.6 million tons of cargo every year. And being Dubai, a millionaire's playground, it's home to some of the most expensive cars in the world. And with cars this expensive, sometimes their owners just can't bear to be parted. Emirates send nearly a thousand cars around the world every year to be reunited with their owners, primarily to the UK, Italy and Germany. Heading up the team responsible for getting these supercars safely loaded on board is Carl, who's been doing the job for 10 years. Today, he's working with team member Syed Ahmed, who has a rather special item of cargo that is leaving Dubai to be reunited with its owner a $270,000 Ferrari F149. Normally, cargo is loaded in regular-shaped containers, making it easier to load. But a Ferrari like this, that costs a fortune, will be loaded directly on a flat pallet. This is Ferrari. I mean, it did arrive from Bombay last night. Now it's uh, departing on EK45 for Frankfurt. It will be such a tight fit, there's no room for any extra protection for the paintwork. For this supercar, the bill for any scratches or dents will run into thousands of dollars. The pallets, with their precious cargo, move into the aircraft's hold via a system of steel spheres that can be programmed to move through 360 degrees they can move 7.7 .7 tons, a fraction of an inch, at the flick of a switch. Yeah. Okay, check that side. Syed has placed his trust in his superstar driver, Tarek. 
to help steer the 15-foot supercar on the pallets. Tariq is one of the best guys we have. He's very expert in car loading. So, I mean, he has loaded so many uh, car, exotic cars, difficult cars. He knows, I mean, which angle we should put the car inside and how to turn and when to turn. You know, these are the most difficult moments. If you'll not uh, turn it in the right direction, then it might damage the aircraft and the car. Any damage to the walls of the plane will mean it won't be able to take off until it's been thoroughly checked, something that would cost a lot more than a respray. But he's made it look easy. The pallet can slide into place. That's a job well done for Terry. The Ferrari may have cost a fortune, but for Carl, things are about to get a whole lot trickier. He has a two-ton Mercedes S-Class that needs to fit into the smaller cargo hold of a 767 going to Uzbekistan. I'm going to actually have a quick inspection of the vehicle as well now, and I'll make a note that there is no damage to the vehicle. We've had uh, incidents before where a vehicle comes off a flight and then they report scratches and damage before offloading the vehicles as well. We also have to carry an inspection as well because we don't want the customer coming back to us and saying, you've damaged our vehicle. Yeah, look, here's the bill. Thank you very much. Carl has overseen the loading of hundreds of cars, but he can never take any shortcuts with cargo this precious. They're going to move the car onto this pallet. What they're doing is they're lashing it to this so that they don't slip apart. The pallets have to stay together, yeah? The edges of the wheels will be right on the edge of that pallet. They'll be right on the edge. You'll see in a second. It's a very long wheelbase, so the wheels will just fit on. And once again, there is only one man he calls to help him load the car. It's Tarek. As you can see, <laughs> the wheels don't actually fit on the pallet, but it's OK as it is. It's still, it's still OK. The Mercedes S-Class is 17 feet long, and it's not going in without a fight. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is very, very difficult. This car, once you get it to here, you can see just how big it is. This is not going to be easy. So slowly, ever so slowly. Hold on, hold on. Whilst it's all hands on the Mercedes down on the ground, the efforts of Carl and Tarek haven't gone unnoticed up in the air traffic control tower, where they seem to be providing some light relief from the extreme concentration usually required. That's about five of them to try and get this on board. <laughs> Maybe it's just tied to the roof like there. <laughs> it must be quite nerve-wracking for them, driving onto that uh, $150 million plane. <laughs> Back down on the tarmac, and Carl and Tarek are edging the two-ton car inch by inch into the hold. <laughs> It may look impossible to get a Mercedes to turn 90 degrees round such a tight corner, but it's the pallet system that makes it possible. Okay. The pallet system and years of experience all that's needed to get a 17-foot Mercedes into the hold. Jumar al Mazrui, director of Project Delivery, is having a day he'd rather forget. He's continuing a site inspection of Dubai World Central that will be serving as a backup airport when the runways of Dubai International are closed for 80 days for resurfacing. The site needs to be ready in four days. So far, that seems a long way off. He's just arrived at what will be the passenger terminal if there are more flights than Dubai International can handle. 
<laughs> why, why are we keeping this space? This, this is, is uh, emergency, fire, exit. emergency exit. If all goes well, this building will never need to be used. But Juma needs to make sure it's perfect, just in case. Okay, it's a okay. gate. So we're going to have some sign on it? Yes. Yeah, People yeah. has to push it? Uh, Signage coming from Emirates. Are you sure? Is... In the 700,000 square foot arrival hall, Juma still wants work to be done. Check. Is it tested? Tested, Jenna. yeah. Can we have one last just uh, floor mopping? Yeah, yeah, the cleaning will, have it just will happen shortly you know, before. Yeah. They, they requested for more offices. We need uh, data PowerPoints. This is imminent. Every little detail needs to be addressed before Juma is ready to hand it over. I think we're ready, guys. Yes. Sure. I'm really, uh, you know, uh, uh, delighted of it. I'm uh, very happy. But there is still one more critical inspection to come and the whole project hinges on the site being up to Jumar's high standards. At Terminal 2, Customs Officer Hassan and his team are about to scan the bags of a passenger arriving from Tajikistan who raised their suspicions in the baggage reclaim area. They're concerned that he has no onbound flight booked and that he claims the bag checked in by him is not his bag. Dubai has strict laws about the importing of certain goods and for illegal drugs, some of the severest penalties in the world. The maximum penalty for drug smuggling is death. <laughs> The normal laptop bag shouldn't be any greens here. In Hassan's experience, the solid areas of green reveal secret compartments within the linings of the cases. And also, this bag, it's obvious more here. The suitcase. The normal bags should be like on the left side, without any density in it. But the, here, you, see, you can see there's a density here. So it's obvious there's something inside the bag. Knowing there is something being deliberately concealed, the team starts to take the bags apart. When I sent these bags, I found some, uh, some uh, like, I felt the weight that it's not a normal weight. So I tried to, to move it a bit. I found out there is something, like, unnormal on the bag. This is a normal bag, but when we wrap it, besides, we found another piece also. Nobody will uh, hide uh, some legal things in this way. Here, it has a uh, smell of heroin. The drugs dealer, they have uh, many, uh, many tricks, like uh, one of the tricks is uh, just keep it in the bottom of the bags. And also they're using the human being also as a carrier inside their stomachs. They plan to just carry the drugs and drop it here. If these slabs are indeed heroin, it will have severe consequences for the passenger. We're using the detector machine with the sticks to take a swab from it and put it in the detector machine to, go, uh, to give us the result of the, what we found with the passenger. Put the swab in the detector machine and wait for the result. As, we sh as you can see, it gives us a red alarm. That means drugs, it needs heroin. heroin. I was uh, positive that it's uh, drugs and positive it is heroin from the smell. Is it okay or not? It's a big find for Hassan and his team. I guess it is around 14 kg, kilogram. And I believe it is worth in the market above the three million US dollar. These are grave allegations, and the passenger could face a long prison sentence or possibly the death penalty. I feel angry because he's trying to like enter drugs in my country and destroy the society. Uh, now the drug section they are arrived now. They will take away the passenger, and I think that that will be the last time the passenger will see his freedom for a while. Jumar al Mazrui has four days until Dubai World Central has to be ready to receive flights from Dubai International as they start their massive program of runway resurfacing. He's already inspected the cargo stands and the passenger terminals here. 
but he's now at the main warehouse for Emirates cargo. And this also has to be ready. It's a big challenge. The whole construction here started late, but uh, we have no excuses anymore, and they have no excuses. We finished, they have to finish. They have their own contractor and consultant from Emirates, but we have to support them. We're all here as one team in the aviation. All right, okay. go. But outside, it doesn't look like it will be ready. Are they going to uh, uh, inspect uh, the fire hydrant outside? It is very important in case of any fire during the operation. Huge amount of cargo is in there. I know. The system has been inspected by ARS and it will be commissioned. So. OK. I don't see that. And inside doesn't look any better. This area should be all cleared from storage. Herrick. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. The construction has been the responsibility of project manager Mr. Herrick Lai, who is now getting the full Juma treatment. Fire is coming for inspection. Where is the smoke construction? Without adequate smoke extraction, the hall won't be a viable operation. We, if we don't and once again, Jumar is finding problems at almost every turn. What makes me more nervous is that if I ask questions and I don't get proper answer. With Emirates' reputation on the line as one of the world's leading cargo handlers, Jumar cannot allow the project to fail. He has an issue with the sand and dust in the cargo hall. There's no hiding when Jumar's on the warpath. The way these guys are doing it, it's just going up and yes. coming down. It's used, it's there pointless. Is, there is its point, it's just wasting of time. And the dust is just moving from one area to another. Compared to a few days ago, this is cleaned up already. Wonderful. When was the last time you were on site? Two months ago, same thing. Not big difference. Juma wants perfection today. These things have been delivered. One area that absolutely has to be ready is the temperature controlled storage. So I would expect this one to be the best area for you, right? It needs to be. With the average daily temperature here in the Dubai summer a scorching 105 degrees. Jumar cannot afford for this not to be ready. This is the good area we're having for operation, huh? You see uh, there's a cleaning, some sort of cleaning happening up there. And just when Jumar thinks it can't get any worse, he spots an issue with the emergency exit signs. Seriously. And I don't know looking at the whole area. This guy is pointing this way. So if you want to run this way, where do you think you're going to end up? If this guy is pointing this way, where do you think he's supposed to go? So what do we do? We kill people in here? No, we need them to go. That is the escape route, you see, Sanjay? Yeah. So the pressure is on for Jumar. He has only four days until the site has to be operational. We are all learning from him. We're asking him to help us to come in and give us advice. So this is exactly what he has done. Maybe a bit harsh, but it's a reality. But Jumar's day isn't over. He's been assured the CCTV system is fully functioning, but then he gets a call from the police chief. It's not working. OK, so the, somebody told me a false information. OK, do you have enough space in your jail, Haikal? I can put somebody in it, yeah? OK, that's what I need to do. I don't like people to lie at me. All right, bye, bye, bye. <gasps> oh! Are they eggs? Those are eggs, right? Dubai police confiscated the animals, but allowed the passengers to continue their journey to Kuwait. The case of the alleged heroin smuggler is ongoing. All the facilities at Dubai World Central opened on time.